primary teachers, welcome to Best Practices Weekly. Have you heard the new buzzword, close reading? I know that it's all over our school campus and I'm sure it's all over yours too. We are gonna take a, um, a two-part edition of Best Practices Weekly, the early elementary edition, to look at today what close reading is and how we can incorporate it into our classroom. And then in our next edition, we'll look closely at a first grade classroom and their close reading of a specific book called The Starfish so we can kind of see it in action. So today we'll kind of break down what close reading is, what's the stu student role and what's the teacher role. And then in the next edition, we'll look closely at a first grade classroom putting it into action. Um, close reading is the repeated reading of a text for a purpose. A lot of times we see close reading lessons where people um, and teachers are initiating three reads of a text. It doesn't always have to be three reads of a text. It can be um, two reads of a text and more complex text it might be four. Um, but it is going back into the text multiple times for a specific purpose. So let's get into the meat of the article today and learn about how we can incorporate close reading in our primary classrooms. You can find students' close reading of science text in the October 2013 edition of The Reading Teacher. As we work with the new Common Core State Standards to bring literacy into all content areas, we're finding, um, and the authors are, are supporting and, and finding, that as students encounter challenging science texts, it's really hard for them to comprehend it. So this article lays out some kind of close reading tools for your teacher toolbox to help make sure that you are supporting students as they learn to read increasingly complex informational text. The first part of this article breaks down information on um, informational text and science text in the classroom in a what's now, what's next format. So it talks about that what's now is that many of our primary students lack exposure to informational text. Teachers naturally gravitate toward literary text, so there's just a lack of exposure. And that students are taught to use before, during, and after reading strategies to determine how important details fit together. We do pre-reading strategies, during reading strategies, and after reading strategies to help fully support and scaffold students to make meaning of um, important science concepts from text. So now let's look at what's next. Well, Common Core State Standards call for a 50-50 balance of literary and informational text for primary grades. So we're going to see a shift in more informational text in our classrooms. And close reading of science text is asking students to really dig deeply into the content of the text without a lot of front-loading by the teacher. So we do kind of want them to take time and struggle through the text, apply those reading strategies that they've been taught into a science text environment um, without too much pre-teaching from the teacher. There will be time for scaffolding and teacher support throughout other readings during um, the close reading time, but that we really want to give students a chance to encounter this text without too much support up front so that they have a chance to use those reading strategies that they've been taught. Let's talk about how you can prepare your primary students for a close read. First, choose a short text that's self-contained so they don't need a lot of background information to dig into it. It's not the middle of a book or the middle of a chapter. Um, remember that not all text is made the same and not all text is worthy to be closely read. So choose something that has a lot of um, depth to it. Identify the purpose. Are you going to use this text to teach text structure, key ideas, or vocabulary? And for primary students, we can go ahead and prepare the text by numbering the paragraphs or stanzas to increase focus during the reading. Um, we can teach students to annotate sparingly. Too much text marking is confusing, so underlining key ideas or key words or details. And then we can go ahead and take time up front to write some text-dependent questions. And those would be questions that make sure that they send our students back into the paragraphs, back into the sentences to find the answers. So that's something that definitely teachers want to do up front is writing those text-dependent questions. Student-teacher interaction during a close reading. Let's talk about what that would look like. During the first reading, we want students to read the passage like we talked about to go ahead and struggle through it, and they need to have a purpose for doing that, and it could be um, answering a question that the teacher has asked. We want students to have time to chat and chart after their first read so they can either write in the text, 
write in a journal, share their responses with a partner, some kind of interaction with the text um, again. And then the second time that they're reading, the teacher can pose those text-dependent questions that send the students back into the text to find the answers. Um, our goal, of course, is independence. We want students to engage in a task that shows their understanding of the text. So this could include at the end of the close read, um, working with a partner by themselves. They could write a response or opinion, or they could create something to help show understanding. Again, these options are wide open to you to be as creative as you want, but your goal would be for them to independently show um, their comprehension of what they've read. I hope that you learned something today that's motivating you to try close reading out in your primary classroom. Use the tips and tricks within this video and remember that not all texts are equal so make sure you choose a text for close reading that is short and self-contained and that really has some depth to it to do a close reading on. And don't forget to come back next week and find the follow-up video to this where we'll look at how a first grade classroom does a close reading of the book Starfish. Thanks for joining us today.